Hey, all right. Good to be back with you guys. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Give us a shout out, and I love to see who you guys are and where you are. We got some good stuff we're going to go over with you in a minute here, but uh, give us give us a holler. It's been a while. We have been in the trenches, I got to tell you. <laughs> we're trying to dig our way out, but we've got a whole new bundle of courses that we've been putting together and a lot of other stuff. It's been a pretty intense several months, actually. But I hope you guys are doing well. I hope spring is actually coming your way, springing a little bit. Uh, it is here, it keeps going back and forth between spring and winter. And hey, Greer from Norway, what's it like there? Uh, <laughs> we had an intense winter, like everywhere in California. You can see behind me, that's uh, Highway 1. That's the famous Bixby Creek Bridge. And I'm actually located about 20 miles north of that. But uh, this little ribbon of highway that runs along the coast of California got really beat up in the storms. They're open, pretty much the road is open now, but it's pretty wild and intense. Hey, Sue, Sun Valley, Christopher in New York, David in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, not far from our good friend Dan, I bet. So I hope you guys are doing well. And, you know, getting out there and doing some creative stuff. I want to talk to you about a couple of photographs, actually. I'm going to, I'm going to start with, uh, actually, I'm not going to start with this first one, but I will come back to it in a minute. This is an interesting photograph that I took of Annie Leibowitz. Uh, let's start here. <clears throat> Who knows the photographer? Pop quiz. Who can name this photographer? This is a very famous photograph. I'll give you guys a minute to answer that question. Uh, what is really remarkable about this photograph is how it was captured. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for an answer. If you guys know who this is no fair googling you should know this you should know this photographer right away yeah christopher wins dorothea lang okay um what's really amazing about this photograph and we use this as an example of cameras do not take photographs people do now i want you to imagine this woman and these two children a few feet away from her you know how, how far do you think that is like six feet now she's not using a an iPhone she's not using a 35 millimeter camera that's about this big she's using a 4x5 like this it actually isn't this camera she had a Graflex I think but look at how big this is and look at how while she's shooting it, this big behemoth thing is right in front of her. And she probably had the back open like this. Actually, she probably sighted it through, I don't have one on this camera, but a viewfinder. If it's a Graflex, you would do it this way. You wouldn't look through the back. I mean, in, my, in this camera, you would be looking through the back like this, but she's probably not doing that. But this, she's capturing that emotion and that expression and what the kids are doing six feet away with this camera like this. Now I want to I want you to think about that for a second. We talk about street photography and going out and maybe trying to be unobtrusive. There's nothing unobtrusive about this <laughs> four by five. Now how do you pull that off? How do you pull that off? The camera itself is a huge barrier between you and your subject. And you're trying to not uh, intervene and, and, and erase that emotion. Look at the frown on her face and the distress and what the kids are doing. So she essentially made herself invisible. But how do you do that? There's only one answer, you guys. You, as the photographer, you are in communication with your subject. 
to such an extent that the subject is no longer worried or concerned about the camera. And that's, that's a people skill, that's not a camera skill. You know, it's very well, it's a very well exposed negative, but this camera has how many controls on it? It's got focus, we've got, we've got aperture. This is kind of cool because the shutter is built into the lens, right? So you actually control the shutter and the aperture right from the lens. But that's it. We focus, in this case, by using this bellows thing. Okay, so you have three controls. This isn't about the camera. This is about Dorothea Lang being there to such an extent that the woman trusted her to open up that, the emotional take the curtain away and just see what's really going on here. Remarkable photograph. And there's so much to be learned from this one image. It comes back to this little phrase of cameras do not take photographs. People do. And all our fixation and worry about what gear we have and do I have the right lens and blah, 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 blah. Think about Dorothea Lange running around with her graph legs. Okay, lesson to be learned. Okay, let's look at a, another image here. Um, if I can find my <laughs> preview, I've got so much stuff going on in this. Here we go. So, Bob Holmes, a remarkable photograph taken in Burma. Another example of, I mean, he, I believe this is, you know, a color slide. Film. I don't actually know. I should ask him. I don't think it's digital. It looks to me like Kodachrome. Another example of Bob capturing this photograph without distracting the subject. This guy has is going about his business in prayer. Bob had to be respectful of that. This is obviously a religious right or you know it's obviously a prayer and the candles and here's Bob capturing this without intruding upon the subject this is a skill this is another people skill you know Bob's famous phrase is you have to know your camera well enough so it doesn't get in the way of your photography remember that super important you have to know it well enough so you're never fumbling. You're not like, oh, how should I expose this? He also says you have to know what your camera sees, not what your eye sees. And not only do you know what his camera sees, but how does that film capture? What is the film going to do when it captures that image? This is why you got to know your camera like a close friend. Another great image from Bob, Taj Mahal, and he had to wait for that gesture. This is an example of composition using gesture. And being patient is another skill as a photographer. None of these things have anything to do with the camera. It's all about you as an artist using this tool. And I'm just saying this to underscore our modern, you know, if you don't have the latest doodad, whatever it is, <clears throat> you know, you can't take a good photograph. Bah, humbug, balderdash. Another, you know, amazing image from Bob. And you, if hopefully you've seen our show where he talks about the first woman came along and he snapped that one and second woman and third, he thought he had it. And then the final woman came out with that amazing red shirt on and it just made the whole image pop remarkable and there's so much to learn about composition in this photograph the diagonal lines give it a feeling of vitality notice their feet are up which also gives that feeling of forward motion again that's just this is a combination of being patient and also knowing when you have it and you get the the decisive moment and you you don't fiddle with your camera you are right there being in tune with the people with your subject 
again, it's not the camera. He could have captured this with practically any camera. And then finally, this one, I'm going to tell you a story. This is Annie Leibowitz, who I went to the San Francisco Art Institute with. And uh, I was on a tour of her exhibit in San Francisco. This is a this is a funny story, you guys. This has multiple layers to this story. So I had a film crew there that was filming me. This was the very, very, very first ever advancing your photography show. Ever. I started with Andy Leibowitz. How about that? And we toured her gallery, her exhibit in San Francisco and I was getting ready with my team and getting the getting their equipment set up and myself set up and whatnot. And then I thought, okay, I I gotta get my camera because I I want to I want to shoot some pictures as we're going through this thing. At that time, I had the state of the art was a Nikon D2F D2X rather a good camera at the, during you know at that time that was pretty cool. So I get, you know, I get my camera out and I go, oh, there's no battery in it. Oh, no big deal. I got batteries. I got spares, you know. So, oh, it's in my car. So I go out to my car. There's no battery. There's no spare battery. All of a sudden I flashed that I left the batteries on the charger back in the studio. Oops can't do much with a digital camera no battery big liability to our digital age so I have no camera so I grab a friend of mine is going through this shoot he had uh, a Canon 5d mark II, which I'd never used before now I use them you know 5d 2 and 3 and whatever 4 I never used one before never never held a, a Canon on top of that, I have to wear reading glasses to see the dials. I didn't have my reading glasses. And on top of that, if these challenges weren't enough, there were no, there was no room left on his card. But he did say, look, there's, you could probably delete these two here. And he deleted two of the images. So I had two, two shots. Can't, I can't read the dials. I don't know the dials anyway, even if I could read them because it's a canon and it's like everything seemed foreign to me. But somehow I figured it out and I got right up there with Annie and boom, captured this photograph. Again, it's not the camera. I, I proved that it was not the camera. It's a moment of, you know, she's telling this story about shooting the cover of uh, Vanity Fair with Demi Moore who is pregnant. So that has a number of lessons. Number one, don't, don't leave your equipment behind. I created a, a equipment checklist as a result of that. And I always, always double check gear because it's so easy, you know, and this, especially because this wasn't my primary purpose. The primary purpose was to video her. And we did have all our video stuff together. But you gotta not leave essential gear behind. Gotta have a checklist. Also, it helps to be familiar with your equipment, which I wasn't. And by just sure, like, I'm going to get this photograph. And, you know, in those days, I might have had an iPhone. I can't remember. I might have had an iPhone 1, but I wouldn't have used it, you know, for this kind of photograph. Anyway, there's my little story. Got a couple of things to remember. It's not about the gear. It's about you as a photographer being there as a photographer, capturing your subject, and letting them be themselves. Whatever emotion that is, that's what you're trying to capture. Okay, so I hope those little life lessons help you guys. Let's, uh, let's shoot over- Christopher has a nice comment. Yeah, let's see what you, you wanna, I'll just pop it right in here, Christopher. A lot of people get fixated on the technical aspects because it's so comfortable to fixate on. It's the social element, confidently pursuing moments and stories that push people into discomfort. Yeah, it's easy to look at a camera and, you know, 
this is the easiest thing in the world. It doesn't talk back. It doesn't give you any emotion. It doesn't sort of stimulate that, oh, am I invading their privacy and all those different things. It's true. That's why I'm actually going to make a course that is only about communication. It's actually called the Fundamentals of Communication, which is applicable to every photographer. Every photographer needs to know the fundamentals of communication. Okay, let's uh, pop on over. Jared, are you ready over there? I am ready. All right, so we're going to switch over to your photographs. Tell me what we're looking at here. I did see this in the AYP Club. Yeah, so um, this was taken by Nigel uh, in, uh, in the, over in the UK, and the caption put with it is Leading Lines. Yeah, and I saw that, and you know, you do have leading lines, but there's missing, there's a missing element. <clears throat> when you have leading lines, and virtually every composition tool is about this, lead, you have to lead your eye to a subject. There has to be like a point. I mean, it does illustrate leading lines, but it would be much more interesting to have a person, for instance, walking in the back of the frame or a dog or a bicycle or something like that otherwise it's just a compositional tool it's a little bit like saying writing a sentence like this look over there look over where there what is there you know you have to specify look at the tree look at the bird look at the car look at the then it's a complete sentence and so think about these tools of composition. I mean, as far as, you know, you, you cap say, okay, good, here's leading lines. It obviously fulfills that purpose. But this is where, you know, especially at night, you might have to be really patient and wait till somebody walks into the frame. You can always be the subject. Don't forget that. You can always put a camera on a tripod put a timer on it, a remote uh, shutter release, and you be the subject and walk into the frame. That's, that's always available to you. Or your companion, if, you, if you're out shooting with somebody, you know, you're free to direct and do whatever you want with that shot. But that's important to remember that leading lines and many compositional tools are based on leading your eye to the subject. Okay, who's next? All right, we've got our good friend, Christopher Scott Carpenter. Uh, and I don't know why, but on a couple of these photos, Facebook decided to add some white space. Okay. I don't believe it was added by them, so we'll just have to ignore the white space. Uh, but anyways, this is a Greek Orthodox Easter service in Montreal, Canada. Yeah, it's very interesting. I honestly could not tell what it was. Now that I see it, I see that. I love the, you know, you've got a lot of layers here. Um, the priest with his, um, yeah, I think that's an incense burning thing, whatever that's called. And the incense burning smoke coming out of it. Um, and the various different expressions, even though we don't see anybody's full face, we see different expressions. This tells a really interesting story. Um, Composition-wise, it's an interesting compositional technique. It's called three-point composition. It's in my book, which is over here somewhere. Um, three-point composition doesn't have to have just three points in it, but it's three or more points. In this case, you have four, really, and then a sliver of the other guy's head, but really it's four point composition, but it's the same idea. There's something interesting about three points of view that that our eye really likes. And, you know, these compositional tools, they're not always easy to explain why do they work that way. I don't know. I, they just work, you know, why does it work that way? I don't know. There's something about the balance. You could get all technical and try to d dissect it, but 
it's it's art you know you can't always dissect art but you do have three points of view and you have a punctuation point which is that uh looks like a sword i doubt it is what is that i don't know what that Some is sort but of a staff or yeah and that's another punctuation point so you got a lot of cool elements going on that make that all work and the emotions are interesting like the the emotion of that priest or minister is sort of a, what would you say? Complacency, boredom? I don't know. There's Or like, uh, gravitas, stoicism, maybe. Yeah, stoicism. That's probably it, yeah. And then on the side, like, look at the guy on the far right. The, no, for, yeah, that guy. I feel like, you know, there's some distress coming out of that guy's face. You know, anyway, you've got interesting emotions kind of coming through here, which makes it a very interesting photograph. So good work, Christopher. And very interesting, once again, that you said no one person has their full face. Muted reverence. Theme. Thank you. That That's that's right. There's yeah, a, that, yeah, no, yeah, no yeah, one person has their full face. That's a good one. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, this is from Guadalupe. Uh, and it is steam coming from the smokestack. This is a sugar beet factory where sugar is made after the harvest. Yeah, it, it, this is a, you know, this is a, what I would, what Dan Milner would call a transitional photograph, or it's it, part of a, a series that, you know, we're, sh we're showing what's going on with the sugar beet factory or the environment around it or whatever. I, I don't consider it a standalone I consider it part of a series which has a definite purpose. You know, you're like in writing, you have a paragraph that may not by itself be, you know, the thing that you're going to quote all the time, but it's important because it explains part of the scene. Sometimes you have a photograph, you know, it's all by itself. It has a complete message. So that would be like a paragraph or a sentence by itself just stands out and it's very quotable so it's a good you know it's a good example of uh of, of using that as part of the image uh story and i like the that you chose black and white um is this a digital it looks like it because i do see some noise up there i would get rid of the noise yeah uh I, unless i'm wrong maybe it is uh, it's possible. I've seen grain look. Kind it can of, be a little harder to tell through. Yeah. You know, but, multiple layers of zoom and. Yeah, but anyway, I would just get rid of that, and it looks like a little, um, a little something. Spot. I don't know if that's a speck. Yeah, right thing. there, or that's a bird, yeah, that or whatever. I'd pro probably just get rid of that, just because it just cleans it up. But otherwise, you know, it's it's definitely got a. You've got a pretty good dynamic range in there from the white snow into the black so that's always great on black and white photography so good one all right uh i need not say who this is i wonder who that is this is our good friend i Sue, laughed at that i saw that in yeah yeah one of our favorite dogs uh and it's idaho wildlife in the deep snow there was a uh, picture of a deer as well, but I just love this one. Of, yeah, and our <laughs> other one of our other favorite dogs is around here somewhere. I don't know where she went. Her birthday's in a couple of days. So yeah, Sue, that's really <laughs> a classic golden look. They're always getting something in their mouth. If they can't chase a frisbee or a ball or a stick or dive in after ducks or whatever you know there's going to be something going on they're very they like to chew and whatnot that's really that's really i love that photograph because it just captures that the essence of a golden retriever and the snow just hunkered right down in there they love water too and snow is water basically so you've got to really you know you got the essence of that uh wonderful dog i i think it's great how it's just the only color is you know the golden face and the golden fur 
Very cool. Good one, Sue. All and right. by the way, you know, uh, I hope you're making progress on your on your plans to to go out and capture other people's animals and pets because you certainly have you certainly have it together. All right, who are we looking at here? I love this photograph just right off. Yes, this is from Kamal, uh, and this was taken in Kashmir, India. Very cool. I mean, you, yeah, the framing you got with the birds around that person, spot on. And that is really, really good. That is how to orchestrate that. It's not an easy one. You really had to be patient and wait for that moment. Because they're basically framing your subject, and the orange or the yellow um, headdress, you know, that just brings your eye right in there as a punctuation point. That's awesome. You know what I would do? There's only one suggestion, just a post-processing. Get rid of that sign. I, I Only because it does pull my eye over there. Listen, this is art, so... One of the things, you know, Bob Holmes talks about you're responsible for everything in the frame. It's true. Now, you you know, whenever you can, eliminate it before you press the shutter. But, hey, there's nothing wrong with getting rid of that. You could easily do that in Photoshop or Lightroom. The only reason, or you could crop it a little bit, but... Um, I don't think I'd want to crop it because I like I, I like the way you have things laid out. But the only reason is it's really the red in that sign just pulls my eye over like this. And, it, and you don't want anything competing with your main subject. Think of it like audio. You want a pure sound, right? You don't want any like side little noises. And if you had one, you'd get rid of them. You'd do whatever you could to eliminate that let's say you're recording voice and there's a, a whir of a uh, a heater right well you want to turn the heater off if you possibly could but if not you'd have jared go in there and use some of his filters and get rid of the heater sound you can do that stuff so that's my only suggestion it's a really great photograph all right, let's look at a couple more. All right, this one is from Isaac. Uh, he has a whole great one. It's Springtime in the Bluegrass Part 2. Let me move um, myself out taken, of the way here. Yeah, right. these were taken in various locations in Kentucky, and this was one I picked from the group. But you should definitely go to the AYP Club and take a look at the rest of them. They're a wonderful collection of photos from farming areas in Kentucky. Yeah, I'm just going to bring this up before we do that. Christopher made a point. We aren't professing photojournalism. Art is fair to be created. That's true. We, this isn't a photojournalism class. If it were, that's totally different. Um, I love the expression. That's really what it's all about. That's like a, almost a human. Oh, look who's here. Hey, River. Come here. She's... She is going to join the party. Okay. Come here. Come here. Come. Come. There she is. She's going to be two years old in a couple of days. Uh, there's that golden. Okay, so expression. You know, animals have lots of expressions, and that's what you captured, a smile. Like, hello. Yeah, a lot of emotion there. A lot of feeling coming out of this uh, sheep. And the, uh, you know, the other elements in it just kind of help tell that story with looking through the fence. Um, I have a photograph of a, of a, a horse in a stall that's somewhat similar to that. River, they're even saying hi to you on, on TV. Sue said hi. <laughs> River doesn't get why I'm staring into a screen when I have... Her right here. Why would I be talking into this blank screen? I know it's kind of silly, isn't it? Okay, well, you can stay right here. So, good one. All right. Animals rule, right, River? Huh? Oh, yeah, I love this picture. I left yep. a comment. 
This one is from Mache, documenting everyday life, morning shot of the family. You know what, Mache? Um, <clears throat> look at this. I just want to. I just want to point out very diff different emotion. But let's look at the. Let's look at the similarity of <clears throat> mother with her children, and one extreme to another of emotion. And that's what I feel like when I look at your photograph. Whoops, go there. Okay. You, you've got this just wonderful feeling of warmth and emotion. Mom and two kids. And <clears throat> black and white tells the story beautifully. It's, uh, it's just spot on. Everything about it is, is a winner. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very different... I wonder if I can put these side by side. Is there a way to uh, do... I might be able to get that set up if you want me to... Go for it. It would just be interesting... Try and get that. Yeah, that's right. You're still in here. So that's... Uh, we're going to do a little behind-the-scenes, like, clever editing here. It would just be interesting to pull these together. By the way, you guys, um, nothing wrong. Like, when you're... Tr Training authors, tra training writers, if you've done uh, any English classes, you know, one of the things you do is you pick an author that you like and you just try to emulate them, right? Like, let's say you really like Hemingway. Hemingway uses really short, short sentences generally and very simple words. He writes at a sixth or eighth grade level. But there we go. We're getting there. And you just try to write an essay as though you're Hemingway or... Jack London, or whoever your favorite author is. And you can do the same thing with your photography. I'm not even saying, Mache, that you did this. I'm just saying this is another exercise you could, you could follow, which is basically take a photograph, of a, take a photographer that you really admire, Henry Cartier-Bresson or Ansel Adams or whoever, and go, I'm going to go out and see if I can find one of those photographs. I'm going to, I'm going to put my own spin on it. Now we're almost there. We got... Yeah, here, I tricky, think i got to figure out how I want to do it. Okay. So we'll do it Jared's... like... Oh, there you there. go. So yeah, it, just... it's not quite side by yeah. side, but you'll be able to... You get the idea. So I don't know if you even vaguely had this in mind. I doubt it. And I'm not saying that you need to. But it's just an interesting composition. Uh, and, but really more important than the composition is the mom with her children in two different emotional environments. One of utter distress. This is during the Great Depression. She didn't even know where she's going to feed her kids and how. And on the other extreme, we have the the contentment and love coming from mom with these two kids. So bravo, well done. Excellent photograph. All right. And black and white, you know, definitely definitely works in this case. Now you didn't have to have one of these though. <laughs> you know, this this sort of makes this process a lot more complicated. Not actually complicated, it's very simple, but a lot more work because you got to take that negative out, process it, print it, you know, you don't just do it like that. All right, let's look at a few more. Okay, this cool. one was a photo submitted by uh, Mika at the local marsh early in the morning. Is are we seeing the full frame? Is it cut off at all, or is that is that it? Uh, this is this is how it is. Okay. As posted. So. Um, I think that's fantastic. I mean, it's amazing. The wingtip is going into the water. Yeah, and the reflection. The reason I asked is it full frame, is because I'd love to see it pulled back a little bit, so we could see the rest of that reflection. That's the only feeling I want to see that, you know, just see the rest of that reflection at the bottom end there. Uh, and I don't know if you have other frames of that. Maybe you could just just pull back a little bit if you're 
if you've got a zoom lens, you just zoom out a little bit or physically pull back, take one step back just, just to get the rest of that. But it's a cool image, it really is, because you're, you're capturing that goose in flight dipping its wings into the water. That's kind of amazing. And, you know, the reflection, that all works well together. So, cool. And this one's also part of a series, and she did have one where you were able to get the full reflection. Yeah, of yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So somewhere between those two, you know, where you're, you, we don't need all that other stuff, but just, just pull back a little bit. You know, that's, not, that's a good lesson to remember when you're photographing. Um, try to, you know, try to think in terms of like various formats and angles, right? Like you've got your, you know, your kind of tight shot here, but also, you know, just pull back and see what happens. And you using your different focal lengths or your feet if you need to, to get, just get a different viewpoint. And then you decide when you're back in your studio which one you want to use. Okay, River's gone back right. into nap mode here. And Sue knows that golden retrievers have two switches. Full on. Or, or zonked out. There's not much in between. Okay, what do we got here? All right, this is from our good friend Gare, who we always love seeing his hey, photos. Gare. This was taken with an Olympus OMD developed in uh, ON1 photo. Now we're talking about a digital, right? I believe so. OMD is a digital and developed in what? Oh, I don't know. Okay, that's their software, I guess. All right. Yeah. That's their software. I think it's one photo is probably how you say it. I've um, used it's it. ON1. Yeah, Olympus sent me uh, a couple of their cameras, and I had them for about three or four months, and I think I did try their software, but I didn't use it very much. Um, interesting. Okay, so we've got two seagulls. One is talking to the other one and complaining to it. That's a wild thing that's going on with its wing, though. What is that? How is that happening? It's, uh, I bet it's probably some kind of, like, an aggressive, yeah, you know, it's... like, what they do to, like, try to freak others out and defend themselves. So this is a digital. Okay. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> that to me is the story right there. You know, it's like this argument going on between these two seagulls, and they do argue a lot. And, um, and the texture of the building uh, you know, that's a really interesting texture. And of course that, you know, black, practically black background and dark gray. Uh, but the seagulls are completely lit up, which makes it really interesting. It's a landing. Ah, okay. Oh. It's doing a pretty fancy landing there. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, you know, that's an interesting moment with these gulls. I see that also as part of a series that this is like a, you know, a sequence. <clears throat> and, um, you know, maybe the gull before, during this shot, and then maybe a little bit after. It's just the way I see it. Uh, a sequential series of, about this argument or where, well, it's not an argument we now know, but what's going on with this gull. But good one. And definitely black and white works in this case. All right, we have time for one or two more, Jaron. All right, this was an interesting one. This was sent by another uh, friend of the show, Chris Mason. Oh, yeah, um, Chris. So, lovely swan on the lake today. Very pleased with this photo and the ripples on the water. Based on great critique, I have attempted to improve the exposure on the body of the swan. It turned out that the body was not blown out, but was rather so white it appeared that way. I've attempted to compensate by selectively warming the temperature of the body of the swan to give it a slight yellow color. Yeah, let's look at these two. Okay, look. I would say that's blown out myself, but I get, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's it is so white from the. 
Interesting. Yeah, you know, this is good. This is the thing that you we use our software for. We can do these amazing things and and change the color temperature. Um, looking at it just, it's, you know, kind of other aspects. So, again, I would pull back a little bit. Let that full reflection shine through there, you know. Uh, I'd probably eliminate the the weeds on the left hand side just because they're they don't really serve any purpose they're not really framing anything i just get rid of that but pull back a little bit let's get more of that full reflection you see the ripples coming out and i think that that might enhance the image so but you know good on your processing aspect and and what you're doing you know you're you're capturing this moment of this swan, I think it is, or uh, I don't know exactly. Swan. It's a swan, okay. Uh, but just, yeah, pull back. You know, you've got two modes where sometimes you come in tight on some subject, and sometimes you pull back. And they're just two extremes on your compositional tools. So whenever you can, try them both, and you can decide which one you want later. All right, one more if you have it, and then we're going I to do. sign off here. Oh, I love it. So here's our final one. This was submitted by Yale, a friend of, from Israel, who we get lots of photos from as well. Uh, and I don't believe that this one had any particular caption. If I find it, I'll let you know. Yeah, it's just a moment of, of love. And, uh, the you know, the colors and the feel, the flowers and the you know the expression of the two girls not you can't really see their expression but there's a there's body language there that you know if you look at it from a composition you've got these two figures you know and they're holding hands so they're kind of joined together that's a that's just a really lovely photograph um patrick uh who is another big contributor um, he commented off on an adventure, and I think that's a great way to. Yeah, that's a really those. good, really good, good caption. Good one. Great, you guys. So thank you. Uh, let me give you a bit of news. That's some of the things that are gonna, you're going to see coming along. We're making another. So we have the AYP Club, which basically anybody, uh, you know, is welcome to join, whether they read my books or courses or whatever but we're also making a separate uh, Facebook group just for people who have um, either done a course with me one of my courses or had coaching um, you know as part of a class like the AYP plus group or our master class so that's coming up really soon if you fall into those categories you will get an invitation if you haven't, you should join that. It's going to be a little more focused uh, just on those members. But always stay part of the AYP club. You, you know, we will do these periodically, uh, uh, you know, critiques and that sort of thing. But that, that new one is going to be a lot more of a community-driven um, place, resource, and I'll spend some more time in there, uh, probably just do, rather than do YouTube broadcasts, we'll do them right from Facebook. So that's coming up really soon. And some other, other stuff we're not quite ready to release yet, but it is on its way. Um, I have my books for sale in our local community. I also have photographs for sale in a gallery in downtown Carmel. Uh, my wife Jan makes uh, jewelry and bracelets. So I'll show you this one. If you guys have read my book Create, you'll appreciate this. Can you see that? You can't really see it. But that, can you see? Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. That says Create on it. It's cool, right? We're going to actually make these available. It's like a a good luck creativity bracelet. Um, we got a lot of creativity happening here in our world. Uh, I'm about to make a new book just focusing on my photographs of Carmel and Big Sur right on the coast of California here. 
I've been photographing here since I was a kid, a little kid. Well, 12 probably. So I got a lot of years of photographs. I'm not going to even tell you how many years that is, but a lot of years of photographs that I'm going to put together and uh, create a book with quotes from authors that I really, really like. Jack London spent a lot of time here, one of my favorite authors. John Steinbeck, another one of my favorite authors. Uh, they have great quotes that will go along with my photographs. So I'm putting that together soon-ish. Probably by the middle of summer I'll have it, maybe August, something like that. Um, that's the beauty of what we do, you guys, is just you get to put your work out there to the world and and hopefully inspire people and help them to see something that you've seen that could help them in some way. So those are some of the big pieces of news coming up. If you're ever in this part of the world, let me know. We'll get together and have a coffee. Okay. And I think that's it. Um, Subscribe. Oh, yes. Do that, will you? I should have said that before, but here I'll say, say it right now. Please subscribe and enable that bell, that pesky bell, so you don't miss our shows. We're going to be doing a lot more cool stuff on YouTube again once we get around this big project we're working on. I got a great email from Bob Holmes who's coming to visit in a couple of weeks in Carmel, so undoubtedly we'll, we'll be shooting a, a new video with our good friend Bob. Okay, you guys, subscribe. I like like your I like your stuff, like mine. Okay, how's that for a deal? Uh, leave your comments. I always like to see your comments, and we'll respond to any that we need to respond to. If you have questions, leave them there. And if you like what we have, please share our work with other people. Okay. And other than that, all I'm going to say to you is. Take your four by five out <laughs> and remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Ba-boom! The easy to use four by five.